Hello everyone, we're back with another album ranking, this time Marillion. One of the most popular post-70s progressive rock bands, and let's get right into it. In last place we have With Friends from the Orchestra. Now, this was released just in 2019, and it, it has, I don't even know if this has originals, but it really, they redo different versions of songs, and they just all sound worse. There's really no effort put into it. You know, it's orchestral versions, but it just doesn't sound as good, and maybe I'm being too harsh on it, but I just didn't enjoy it uh, at all. Next we have Happiness is the Road, combining parts one and two, because, I mean, it's pretty much, sim they're very similar albums. Um, problem is... This, uh, this, this is a little interesting what they do here. And I think it's good that they're trying something new. I don't think it works. They combine their sound with a lot of other influences, and really it's not that great. Um, you know, when Fish was running Marillion, it was one of the best bands of their era. But, the Steve Hogarth era has not been that great, you know. Um, I've never truly liked the Hogarth era, because it's not Marillion. They're just doing what everyone else does. Marillion had a, their sound, and it was inspired by Genesis, and... A lot of people don't like them because they kind of copy Genesis. But Genesis wasn't around by that point, the Gabriel Genesis. So they're just... I mean, if you can't see Genesis, see the next best thing. Now we have Marillion.com. Really pretty awful of an album. Not good at all. Really a failure in every sense of the word. This is not Marillion. And it's the same with an album that's kind of similar. Radiation came about, came about the same time. And it's also similar with an album, Anarachophobia. Seriously, this, they slow it down. There's no energy, emotion put into it like Fish used to do. I mean, this is just poor man's, oh my god, this is poor man's everything. I mean, anything that's <coughs> more contemporary pop, it's terrible. Let's go to another bad album, Sounds That Can't Be Made. Another lazy album put out by a lazy band. Can't bother to write good... They haven't wrote good music since the early 90s. Or, I mean, even the late 80s. I mean, just pack it up. You know? The band members, in general, I don't really have too much a problem with. Except Steve Hogarth. He sucks. But I love Tr Pete Travavis... Travavis... Or something. The bassist. I, for, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, really. Because he's in Transatlantic, and I love Transatlantic. Mark Kelly is a pretty good keyboardist. Uh, what's the guitarist's name? It wasn't it like Steve something, too? Um, the thing about Marillion is... Really, they hit their peak a little too early, and now it's they've just been going forever. Steve... Yeah, Steve Rothery. Steve Rothery is fine, but really, Fish is the best member. Now we have Less Is More. When they changed it up to an acoustic out, the more an acoustic album. What is this? It sounds like a, a thrift shop gospel album that you'd wipe your butt with. Um, now we're still in the tier of what? Somewhere else. I forget everything about this album, and I've listened to it. I don't remember one song. I remember it was long and boring. Now we have, oh, oh yeah, okay. Now we come into the tier, which isn't as bad. This Strange Engine. And there's re this is really a one-track album, because all the other tracks are garbage, except for this Strange Engine. The, uh, uh, the, it's a more of a progressive rock epic. Not It's not that epic, but um, I think it is a good song. So, 17 minutes long. It's a little slow. It's not like Grendel. But it's listenable. 
Now we have an album, 2016, Fear. Uh, actually decent. And not, I wouldn't call it good. I would call it a little less than good. But for 2016 Marillion, they were doing some good stuff. Now we have, we're going into the tier of albums that I like. Now we have Holidays in Eden, a Hogarth era album, but it was still pretty early. Which, you know, so they still had some of their energy they had in the 80s. And there, there are some popular songs from this album, you know, No One Can. And Holidays in Eden, early 90s. And I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. 80s to early 90s, uh, Marillion, I do like. And it really had a lot of solid material. And it was in a period of then where they're still writing solid material. Now, Afraid of Sunlight is another... Uh, this is a mid... I'll just consider it early. Uh, early 90s album. Probably written in the early 90s, so technically. Um... This album has a lot of great material on it, and it's not the Marillion that we all love, but it's also not completely unlistenable, and it does take its time, and there's a lot of subtleties to like. Season's End, an album uh, that the first Hogarth era album, and not a bad album, because, you know, and I, I think you could find it. Um... I think they recorded some of these songs with Fish. That's what I've heard from the rumor mill. And maybe you could find it on there. I have not heard it. But Season's End, written during that era, so of course it's going to be good. <laughs> um, and yeah, I do like some of the material on here. I would prefer Fish, other than Steve Hogarth, but what can he do? He's been out forever. Now we have Marble's 2004 release, really interesting, and I think uh, Marillion really found something new here, really did something different, and really sounded like, you know, a, a Neo-Prague-like uh, band, they sound like IQ, and they sound like a lot of other bands, but they do take it well, more of a concept, I don't know what the concept is, but it, it flows into each other, so there's some concept there. Now we have Brave, which is going to be the top Hogarth era album. I think it has the best material out of any Hogarth album, and really was, it's really good. Really good. I wouldn't put it great, but I would say it's the best material that the Hogarth era has. But now we go into the Fish era, baby. 80s. This is, I mean, this is one of the only bands that I really do love during the 80s. Um, most other progressive rock bands suck during the 80s, other than King Crimson, Pink Floyd, and, uh, you know, Frank Zappa, other than the mid-80s. Like, his stuff in the early 80s was good, and then came back in the late 80s, but I wouldn't say he was consistent throughout the 80s. I mean, Rush, early 80s, but Marillion was really consistent with their albums. Um, I mean, yeah. One of the only people going from the 70s to 80s that were consistent. They kind of got their real start in the 80s. Fugazi, his, a great album. Really does have classics on it. I think the, the not-so-good songs are kind of like meh. Compared to some of the other albums that don't even have any bad songs. So, yeah, 1984, Assassin, Classic, Jigsaw, Punch and Judy, Emerald Wise, Incubus, Fugazi, really just so many classics. Now we have Script for Jesser's Tear. Maybe some people would have this higher. Uh, it's a classic, really reminiscent of the classic progressive rock era, even though it was released 10 years after the peak of it, 1983. Sounds like something released in 1973. You get Script for Jesser's Tear, classic. He Knows You Know Fine, The Web Fine. I Love Garden Party and Chelsea Monday and Forgotten Sons. Um, I think that's it. I mean, maybe... I'm looking on the Spotify ones. That's how I find the track list quick. Market Square Heroes and some of the more deluxe edition stuff is on here. But there are a lot of singles that they did that were great around this time, like Grendel and Market Square Heroes. So, now we go for what most people would have number one. I don't have it because... 
I think this is a great album. I would say I have more of an emotional attachment to the one after this, but I'll, I'll go over the rundown. So Pseudo Silk Kimono, Kaylee Lavender, that's when Marillion made their most money. You know, that's when they really... Kaylee and Lavender, um, you know, they were going to... They were that, those were big hits in the UK. You know they that's the this is about the time that people heard of Marillion actually. So, um, but that's not those aren't even the best songs on the album, and it's not close. Bittersweet is great. Heart of Lothian, pretty great. Waterhole, fine. Learns the backstage, fine. And then then it comes back with Blind Curve into Childhood's End, which is a really great way. And then White Feather, really great one to end the album. Very consistent. A uh, really great classic progressive rock album. Now we have number one, and I don't, I would not put this at any other place. Clutching at straws. I love this album so much. I have it on. I got the new, uh, the 2018 remaster on on LP, and I love it. It sounds amazing. Starts out with Hotel Hobbies. It's this is so classic, and lyrically, it, I I feel connected to it. I don't know why, but just Fish's performance, you're not going to get like that, something like that from Steve Hogarth. Warm Watch Circles, That Time of the Night, Going Under Just for the Re There's no bad song on this album. A great ending, Sugar Mice and The Last Straw. I mean, listen to it. It, it combines accessibility with progressive rock and different time signatures and solos and everything you'd want out of a progressive rock album. And it's just so surprising that it was released in 1987. Because it's so crazy. I mean, it's really it's really an amazing album, though. So, give it a listen if you had to listen to any Marillion album. 